Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. In this simple tutorial video, I want to show to you how you can use a microcontroller to make an LED blink. And if you're curious, this is how it looks like. Microcontrollers are like tiny computers, but on their own, they're completely useless. We have to write a program and tell them exactly what to do. In this case, make an LED blink. That program is then converted into a so-called hex file, and that hex file is flashed onto the controller. This tutorial video is split into three parts. First, we will download all the software that we need to write the LED blink program. Then we will build a tiny test circuit to flash our hex file onto the controller using the PICKIT3. And then we will finally build our test circuit that you saw at the beginning of this video. In this tutorial, I will focus on the PIC microcontrollers by the company Microchip. And we will need to download two things. The MPLAB10 IDE, which we need to write our program, and the XC8 compiler, which is used to generate the hex file. Both of these programs can be downloaded for free, and I'll put the links in the description down below. Our project is based on the controller PIC16F627A, that you can buy at mauser.ca or any other online distributor for a few dollars. But don't worry, there are hundreds of other controllers out there and what this tutorial is about applies to almost all of them. So let's start up the MPLAB 10 IDE or Integrated Development Environment and create a new project. This is all right, microchip embedded standalone projects, that's what we want. Device, we're going to type in PIC16F627A because that is our controller. Click on next, click on next, and under tool, we will select the PICKIT3. As a compiler, we will choose the XC8 compiler, which is an 8 bit C compiler, and we have two versions on this operating system, so let's just go with a newer one. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. And for a project name, we're going to call this. I don't know, zero one blink LED, something like this. Okay. So now let's create the source file. We do this by right clicking on source file, new main.c. As a file name, we're gonna use main and we just click on finish. The first thing we want to do now is set the so-called configuration bits. We can go into detail on this at a later tutorial, but for now, because you know this is the first time we're doing this, let's just keep it simple. So we click on Window, Target Memory Views, and then Configuration Bits. So that's well hidden. So let's make this a little bit bigger. These are the values that we need, and now we click on Generate Source Code to Output down here. So it just gave us something, it's hard to read. Let's make this a little bit bigger, and there you have it. This is the code, the config or configuration code that we just copy now. We can just make this a little bit smaller again. And we'll place this in front of this line here, in front of the hash include. We just control paste this right here. So this just tells the controller of what kind of options we're using. Um, and it's not important for our project right now. Okay, so now we have to do two more things. We have to do well, we have to define where we put our LED. Now let's put it at the port RB3, and we're going to use it as the name LED. And this is the main, sort of like the main part of our program. So let's go in here. First, we have to say, okay, the LED will be at port RB3, which means port RB3 has to be an output. This is how we tell the controller that it will be an output. And now what we want is we want to set the LED on and off and on and off. We're going to make it blink, right? So we write LED equals 1, LED equals 0. So it goes on, it goes off. But we want to make it wait in between, right? We don't want it to go on and off real quick. We want to have a pause in between. So let's choose one second of a pause. So we have to write delay milliseconds. And as an argument, we put 1000. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. The same here. 
and now it goes on, waits a second, goes off, and waits a second. But then the program ends, and so that's not what we want, right? So we have to encapsulate the whole thing in a loop so that it gets executed over and over and over again. So let's write while one. All of this is now in the brackets. And anything that's in between those two yellow brackets here will be repeated over and over and over again. It will never stop. And most microcontroller programs actually have that internal structure that there's one main loop that is repeated over and over and over again. Now there is one thing that is missing that's put that in now, which is we have to define uh, this, this object here. So what I mean by this, this is just a name it stands for crystal frequency and it tells the controller what is the frequency that this program is running with. We set it to 4 million and that means the program is running at 4 megahertz or 4 million steps a second. That is important because we use this command here, delay milliseconds. If we don't tell the controller how many cycles per second it has, it wouldn't know how many cycles one millisecond is or how many cycles one second is. So we set it to 4 million because in this configuration here, specifically this one, uh, tells the controller to use the internal oscillator, which runs with 4 megahertz. But these are all details. This is all what we need. So now we just save this and we're ready to compile. And compiling means that now we will create the actual hex file. And that is the file that contains the machine code that the controller can understand. So let's click on this hammer symbol up here that says build main project or alternatively you can also press F11. Let's do this. And it's doing stuff. And we see here there's a lot of information. And we see here build successful. So that's great. So the file has been created. So you see here you see the, the path, right? So it's a very long path, but this is just our project folder. You see it's under distribution, default, production, and then there's a long name and then dot hex. And this is the important part. This is our hex file. And this is the one we need to flash onto the controller in the next step. All right, one down, two more steps to go. In the next step, we will build a tiny test circuit that allows us to flash the hex file onto the controller. For that, we also need the PickKit 3, which you can find on Amazon for around $25. This device plugs into your computer via USB and it can be used for many other PIC controllers as well. The PicKit 3 has six terminals and from right to left they're called Master Clear, VDD, which is just plus five volts, VSS, which means ground, PGD, which stands for data, PGC, which stands for clock, and LVP, which we won't be using in this tutorial. When we want to flash, the PIC 16 f 627 a we have to connect the first five pins to the corresponding pins on the controller. Let's look at the data sheet of the PIC 16 f 627 a After some general information, we find the pinout. VDD is located here, VSS on the opposite side at pin 5, Master Clear at pin 4, right above, Programming data and programming clock are at pin 13 and 12. So we need to connect the PIC kit to the microcontroller. And we do this using a simple pin header right here, 1x6, that we plug into here, like so. And then this pin header in turn, this guy, plugs into the breadboard. So let's build it. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better what's going on. And let's start by putting in the pin header in the top left, like so. And then as the second piece, of course, we need to put in the microcontroller. Let's say somewhere around here, we have to be careful that we don't bend the pins too much when we put it in. Make sure it's in there really good. Okay, now we take those five cables here and we have to connect the microcontroller to the pin header. So let's start with the positive terminal and I use the color red for this. And the positive terminal on the 627A is this pin right here. And it connects to the PIC kit on pin number two, up here like this. Ground is right below, so ground connects here. And on the other side, 
like so. The next connection is master clear. Let's put this a little bit more in the middle. Master clear, which is the first pin. And then this connects to the pin right above ground. Now we have master clear connected. And the only two missing are data and clock. For data, I'm going to use the orange line. That is the next line here, or the next pin on the header, right about here. And it connects right below plus 5 volts. And then there is clock, which is our last connection, which is pin number 5 on the pick kit, and right below data. So there you have it. This is our improvised programming board. And now let's hook it up to the computer and let's flash it with our hex file. But how do they plug in? I could do it this way or could do it this way. So we have to remember that there is this little triangle here. And this triangle stands for pin one, or in other words, for master clear. And master clear is our yellow cable right up here. So we know that these have to line up like so. So when we plug it in, ideally, we would have a 45 degree connection. Um, I don't have the header at home. I don't want to buy another header just for that case. So what I'll do is I'll just flip this over and plug it in like this. So it's not ideal, like I said, but um, it gets the job done and that's all we need really. So we will put this contraption on the table in front of us, connect it to the computer and program it. So you have two options to flash the PIC controller with your hex file. One of the options is to use the MPLAB 10 IPE or Integrated Programming Environment, which is this one. You could also do it from within the Integrated Development Environment IDE um, that we used earlier to write our code, but I like this program a lot more because it's easier to use. So I will explain how to use the MPLAB 10 IPE for that purpose. So you can see here, we already have selected the correct device. If it doesn't show correctly, you can just delete the text and type whatever you need. So that's the 16F627A. Under Tool, you can already see that our PIC Kit 3 has been recognized by the, by the software. And all I did is I just plug it into the computer and into the circuit like I just showed you. Now, one of the things you want to do is we want to connect this. So let's click on this. And let's see what happens. It's doing something. This is a standard warning. Don't, don't worry about it. It just says that um, there are different devices, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. You, we have to be aware of this. Our device is 5 volts, so there is really no problem. Let's click OK. It says target device was not found. That's bad, but that happens a lot, and that's why I actually deliberately kept this error message in this video, because what we need to do now is we need to click on Power. Under Power Settings, Voltage Options, we need to tell the controller, or the picket rather, that it should power the target device from the tool. So that's this check mark right here. So we have to check this and that's it. So we click back on operate and now we see, well, it says disconnect. So that kind of probably tells us that it's connected. So we can do this. We can just click on verify and see what happens. Click OK again. It's doing something and it tells us here verification successful. That's great. So now let's select our hex file and then we do this here. This says hex file right here and we click on browse and just select our file. So this is the hex file that we just uh, compiled earlier and let's just go find it real quick and load it. So I have just loaded this and all we need to do now is click on program and everything should go well. So let's watch this down here, see what happens. Yep, programming complete. That's all we need to know. And now is the big moment. Now that the hex file is on here, how do we get the controller off again? Well, we just take some sort of pointy tool. I like to use this pencil here. You can use whatever you want and just gently put it under here and push just really softly like this. Just really softly so you don't want to bend the pins too much. When you do this, you see it's coming loose a little bit. You can just grab it with your fingers and just move it back and forth a little bit. and there you have it. That's it. Now we can plug it into our test circuit. But right, we have to build it first. <laughs> so let's do that next. Here's the schematic. 
In the middle you can see our controller and on the left hand side you see the power supply. It is connected to VDD, the positive terminal, and to VSS, which is the negative terminal. The negative terminal of the power supply is also identified as the ground potential. We should also not forget to connect the pin master clear to plus 5 volts because otherwise our controller will keep resetting. On the right side we see pin RB3 which is connected to the positive terminal of the LED which is then connected to the resistor which in turn is connected to ground. And that's it! So let's take another empty breadboard, either the one we used before or a new one. And first we'll put in the PIC controller, the 627A. There it is. And now we need to connect power and what I like to use are those kind of modules here. You can get them on Amazon for around two or three dollars. If you buy more you get a little bit of a discount. And what they do is they take a USB input here and convert it into five volts on these pins. So it's very useful and you can just put it right back, uh, you can plug them right into the breadboard. That's what they're designed for. And here's how you do it anywhere. Like this is fine. So you see they plug in from the side. It's very simple. There's really no way to do this incorrectly. The only thing to keep in mind is that there are these jumpers here, right? So there's this one, this jumper here and this one here. You can take them off like so and you have them here and you can plug them somewhere else, right? So now they're here, not here anymore. What does it mean? It means that now this side will be on 3.3 volt and will not give out 5 volts. So we don't want that, so let's put it back. And if you're building this at home, make sure that your jumpers are both on the left side for this project because we will, this one works actually with 5 volts. And what this means now is that this rail here carries plus 5 volts, this blue one is connected to ground, and the same on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And what we can do now is we have to connect three wires. The first one is just a positive terminal. And as we have seen before, that is just this pin here. And we can connect it to the plus pole. And um, let's just do this. It doesn't matter which side you connect it to. I'll, let's use the left side. The next connection is the ground connection. That's just on the opposite side here. Let's just connect this to ground as well. Now the reset wire is the one above ground here and we need to connect that one to plus 5 volt as well, like this. And that is all the wires we need in that project. The next thing is the LED. LEDs have a special uh, property and that is they have, if you look at it right here, they have a short and they have a long wire. The short one is the cathode and the long one is the anode. And this matters because when we plug it in the wrong way, the LED won't light up. So make sure that the long wire or the anode is connected to the port RB3 of the PIC. So that's this one right here. The bottom left. Plug it in there like so. Now we need to connect our resistor that limits the current that flows through the LED. And this looks like this. It's a very tiny object. This one doesn't matter how you plug it in, just take it and connect it to this pin here the lower pin of the LED or the cathode and then the remaining pin you connect that to ground. That's it. That's all we need and the circuit is now complete. Now we can grab a USB cable that we connected to an external battery charger, phone charger, whatever you want and it's a cable like this. So you see here just a regular USB cable. So let's connect it just like this. Make sure the power supply doesn't jiggle too much around. And then, well, nothing happens, right? Well, yeah, we didn't turn it on yet, so let's turn it on. And we see the LED is blinking, which means our circuit is working and our project was a success. So congrats. I really hope you got some use out of this tutorial. And if you want to learn more, you can check out my website, friendlywire.com, where I also keep an up-to-date list of all the components that I used in this project. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope I could show you today that you can learn electronics. Thank you so much for taking the time, for tuning in, and I will see you next time.